So I'm going to talk to you about operational excellence and our journey at Manchester UK. We call it the Mancunian way. So it's quite a dangerous thing to talk about the glories of Manchester when you're in Liverpool on the 13th floor, but I'm going to help. So yeah, so the Mancunian way. So we call it the Mancunian way because we manufacture in Manchester and it belongs to Manchester, it belongs to us all. So rather than calling it some word that might not be meaningful, our operational excellence system and our quest is called the Mancunian way. So um, there's a couple of really important points in there. Also, COVID was a big player for us as well. So those are probably the time points we want to remember. So firstly, I'm going to do some introductions. So myself and James are going to be introducing ourselves as part of this. Okay, so a bit about myself. So that's me at the top. Um, I've worked, always worked in manufacturing, um, love working in manufacturing. I've worked in the plastics industry. I've worked for uh, toothpaste. I've worked for Fox's Biscuits, which was one of my favorite jobs. Um, I've worked for a company that made um, uh, devices for cancer drugs, and I now work for Logic. Um, outside work, I'm, uh, I actually support um, and help and walk uh, Greyhound, so Greyhound Rescue. So that's all a bit of my pastime. So if you want to know more about operational excellence or adopt a greyhound, see me later. Hello, everybody. My name's James O'Sullivan. Um, I'm the site director at Hologic, and I started my career at GKM, predominantly in the aerospace business. And in fact, Dave and Pete were probably the first people to teach me anything about lean. And here we are 15 years later and they're still teaching me stuff, so that's good. I've done everything from wing structures to exhaust systems to lip skins. And then I was running the site down in Luton where we built fast jet canopies, windows and ice protection systems. But last year I took the leap into Hologic, so I've gone from aerospace to medical devices. And the real draw there was the operational quest that they're on and the Mancunian way. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. So yeah, so we're going to talk about the Mancunian way. It's our quest to become operational excellent. And we'll talk about that journey as we've gone through. So a little bit about uh, Hologic first. So our purpose of Hologic, we're a women's health company and our, pro our, our purpose is to enable healthier lives every day. And we predominantly work in the women's field. We think we do more for women's health than any other company. It's an American company. It's on the NASDAQ. It's got, it's got revenues of about four billion, but it doesn't have a universal operating system, which is really interesting. Um, and in Manchester, we produce test kits and we're in the diagnostic division. Um, so if we just go on to the next slide, I'll tell you a bit more about us at Manchester. So I hope you can see on the screen, that's a picture of our site. Um, started manufacturing in 2013. Um, we've got 160 employees in operations, 300 in total with some shared services. And um, we're going to be supporting 28 million patients this year. So we do diagnostic test kits for human viruses. I think that's the industry we're in. Um, there's a, in the middle section there, there's some pictures. So we'll take a swab and we'll also diagnose that swab for a human virus. That's the industry we're in. Um, it's on a machine called a panther that would typically sit in hospitals. Um, the other key things in there, those are some of the sort of areas that we support. Um, we yeah, test for H HPV, which is a leader for cervical cancer. Um, so we make the products for that, but you can see STDs, uh, HIVs are really important to us, and SARS COVID, so we'll go into COVID as well. And our products um, from Manchester site distributed throughout the world, excluding the US, the US plants do that. So that's a bit of position of who we are. And our technologies, so like um, any process driven thing, we um, bulk products, we then fill products and then we package it. As you can see, there's a bit of a diagram there, but typically, like most pharma or diagnostic products, the bulk products are really expensive. If we get it wrong, it's a big problem. So bulk products might be something like £100,000 just for a batch. So that's the sort of magnitude we're in. Um, and we do have some fairly automated and semi-automated technology as well. So that's about our capabilities at Manchester. And what I want to talk to you about is the COVID pandemic, because this was a big thing in Manchester. So we were part of the response to, um, to the global pandemic in Manchester. So within a number of weeks, we were building new plants. We understood what the virus was, and we were doing what they call PCR test kits. You may remember that because you may have been a victim of a PCR test kit. I think we'll use it that way. So we were getting calls from government ministers um, asking, where's my COVID test kits? And you'd think, what else were they doing, those government ministers? I don't, I don't dare think about it. But. So we were getting um, responses from government ministers, and it was a great time because we were really busy. 
We had new production lines, new warehouses. We went from a five-day operation to a seven-day operation, 24-7. Everything changed. And we produced 50 million PCR test kits. Um, so it was a really exciting time for us. Um, and it was all about delivery. Every moment was about delivery. It was running, it was running. We were on that wheel. It was all about delivery. However, we then had our COVID hangover. We had our long COVID because when we came out of that, we had a lot of issues um, because we hadn't been taking care of the operational excellence and the people. So we had a number of issues. We had high inventory in wrong places. We have customer service issues. We have loads of teams working in silos. And that was really interesting that we created this monster where we're all working in silos. Um, firefighting was just the way that we did stuff. And we had lean tools, but they were not maintained. So we had little bits of 5S, little bits of you know, TPM or whatever, but nothing maintained. And actually, our employees didn't want to work for us. Now, what a message that is. Our employees didn't want to work for us. You can see that's our Gallup survey. And I don't know if you guys do engagement surveys. This is our Gallup survey. So um, and now after COVID 2020, our, we came out in 21, we had a 3.5A. And Gallup's quite a harsh measure, but that's like we were in the bottom 25% of all companies in the world in terms of engagement. Wow, what a message. We had to do something. We couldn't carry on. So that's when the Mancunian Way was born. So what we did initially was we're very proud of being in Manchester and our colleagues are all from the Manchester area and we decided we'd wanted to connect the pride of Manchester into the pride of the factory and the plant. So that was the first thing we did. We, taught, we thought about culture being at the heart of what we wanted to do and people. So you see on the screen there, that's our montage of pictures that lead into our canteen. You can see some of the greats of Manchester there. Um, and, um, you know, we were getting that connection between science against uh, about um, really um, taking care of people and standing up for what's right. So that's a montage of the greats of Manchester. We wanted to build that into the greats of Hologic. We came across this fella here, uh, this cheery fella called Chiego Shingo. I don't know if anybody's heard of him, but basically he took... Toyota production systems and made them and helped us in the West understand what they were. He has some guiding principles where he captures what, um, what great looks like. And these can be quite textbook in some ways. So in the slides, we've got something about culture, something about continuous improvement, and something about true north. I think we've heard lots of things about that. But actually, some of the concepts in there are quite difficult. So when I talk to a team, they go, oh, John's talking about shingles again. What the hell's he on? So, no, 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 it's, 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 it's shingo, it's not shingles. So, you know, it just wasn't hitting the mark. You see some of the words in there, things like embrace scientific thinking. What would embrace scientific thinking mean to an operator? Uh, not an easy one to do. So what we did, we knew it was a model that worked, and what we did was take his model and turn it into the words that mean meaningful for the teams. So scientific thinking actually means solving problems and using data the Mancunian way. We won't go every one of them, but we've interpreted the triangle um, and Shingo principles into Mancunian words. And here's some of our, we started on culture, because culture was really important. We didn't have an operating system to copy, and we knew that culture was our biggest gap and biggest game. So what we did, we created a vision. Our vision on site is to serve 100 million patients. We understood our core values and we have recognition against values. We don't recognise against maybe someone's completed a project. We recognise about how the teams and team members have completed that task themselves. So our values, you can see down there, are things like trust, citizenship, respect, and such like. There's some words under there that the operating teams have written themselves and what they're meaningful for them. But that's what we start on. Um, we did Mancunian Way workshops, so we introduced to people and the team members to what Shingo was about, the Mancunian light. Um, Gemba walks have heard word, word of, but Gemba walks are like, we call them Mancunian wonders because it's more meaningful. Why call them a Gemba walk? Um, and we recognize, recognize against our values. So at a very highest level, this is the Mancunian way. On Manchester site, we... On Manchester side, we're creating a culture where we can give our best of ourselves, finding better ways of doing things aligned to our site vision. One of the first things we did is the teams wrote um, some poetry, having fun. 
How odd is that? Teams wrote some poetry, the words of their own, and these pictures, and this was made by themselves. Um, so it's something we're really proud of. We are HR, we are IT, we are regulatory, we are logistics, warehouse, planning and a new facility. We are filling, wrapping and a packing hall. We are QC, process transfer, validation and quality for all. Reception, security, bonding to complete and a little hive for a sugary treat. We manufacture products that help with the well-being of all. All of them made here on this site, neither too big nor too small. Neither 100% red or 100% blue, all held together with a rainbow hue. Some of us old and many are new, but 100% focused on our commitment to you. Some of us gay, some of us straight, using the science of sure to make something great. All of us following the Mancunian way, ingrained in us all like DNA. We are a city of workers with occasional shirkers, of Bibles, Korans and Christmas party twerkers. A sight of safety boots, high-vis vests and obligatory safety glasses and terrible followers on our security passes. The work done by Stopes and Pankhurst's fight for rights of McKellen's Shakespeare, Happy Mondays dancing and Oasis fights. Turing's computers and Rutherford's work splitting the atom. Danny Boyle's Academy Award, Oldham making IVF babies happen. Being the first sitter of the Industrial Revolution, partying at the Hacienda with a rave evolution. Paintings by Laura and gold medals for Storer, all examples of Mancunian glory. Each of us different, but never alone. All of us proud to call her logic our home. The Mancunian way is to make it yourself, but that's not enough to put the prize on the shelf. So listen to our message today and please take heed because this will put us all on the path to succeed. Please be patient, interactive, and we hope to make you smile as this was mostly put together by Scousers in Exile. So I think you get the idea, right? That's all built by the team, written by the team, performed by the team. They did it, and it's what it means to them. And the final quote is one that sticks with our teams, which is, this is Manchester, we do things differently here. So John spoke about the fact that we, don't have a, we didn't have a, uh, a top-down or a corporate strategy or a, an OPEX system, which meant that we could create our own, which is terrifying because we've got to create our own but it's also very exciting because we've got a blank canvas. And what this meant was, everything that John's just described really sits in cultural enablers of our Mancunian way triangle. Um, and, and the point I'm making is, we didn't need to, we weren't pressured into diving into tools and systems. We spent 12 or even 18 months focusing on culture before we started diving into the tools, which is a error you see many lean transformations fail because they jump into the tools too quickly. So what I'm going to talk about now is we've, we've got that bedrock. We, we were doing some really nice things with culture. We now want to start playing with continuous improvement, but we didn't have a roadmap. We weren't really sure what to do, but there were certain things we knew were part of our staple lean diet. There were things that, regardless of what that roadmap looked like, we knew we were going to be, we knew we were going to be performing those. So that's what we jumped into and started with. So I'm going to take you through a few of the things we've done over the past sort of 12 to 15 months now. So the first one was daily Kaizen and Kaizen events. How do we get our teams to be able to make improvements? So we broke this down into two categories. One is daily Kaizen. How do we get our teams to make small improvements every day? How do we empower them and give them the time and tools and encouragement? And then the second side of that, the other side of that, is, is a Kaizen event. So this is big events, multifunctional, multi-day. We're going to put a lot of resource into it and we're going to make a big difference. So how did we approach that? We used to have a system called CIs, and it was basically a suggestion scheme. And when, when I joined Hologic, a lot of the frustration that was coming out of the team was they were putting in a CI, and because it was a suggestion scheme, when it didn't go anywhere, they were getting frustrated, but there was no ownership. They were expecting somebody else to do it. So we got a team of people, not leaders, but a team to redevelop this, and they've come up with an AIM system, All Improvements Matter. This is, gives the teams the ability to raise an idea and see it all the way through to completion, it's visual, so it's on their tiered daily management boards and you can watch the ideas progress. It gives them the opportunity to escalate when they're not, they're not getting the resources or help that they need. And we have an aim of the month award and we have local awards to be able to recognise and reward some of the better ideas that are really making a difference. 
The second side of this, Kaizen events, how do we plan Kaizen events? How do we get the, get, how do we make it so that they're gonna be successful? And we've created what we call a Kaizen pipeline. As you can see, it's all paper, it's written by hand. It's scrappy, but it's not crappy. So we like to do stuff manually. We don't want to make it all digital yet because we're not ready for it. And the way that this system works is uh, an ease versus impact analysis to decide what, which events we're going to take forwards. We then have a six month um, planning um, cycle. This bit in the middle here is um, six months worth of Kaizen events broken down into four week slots. It then goes into a preparation cycle and there's four weeks of preparation to a standard checklist. This is making sure we've got rooms booked, we've got our material, we've got data's been gathered, we've got the team allocated, we've got lunch booked, all of those sort of things. Then we have the big day, we do the Kaizen event, and then we have a 30, 60, 90 day check to make sure the metrics that we were trying to influence, we have influenced, and the, any outstanding actions have been completed. So next, we've, so we've given people the ability to make, a, make some changes now, but they don't even know how to talk in the lean language. They don't even know any, any of the lean tools. So we've developed a lean fundamentals workshop. This is a two-day course. It's immersive, where the teams learn something, but then they go and practice something. And we've done that developing a 240-volt plug factory. Uh, it goes through six rounds. And over the two days, the teams are learning some of those basic things. They're learning about the eight wastes and downtime, what's value added and not value added. How do we create pull and flow and the importance of it in a factory? Problem solving at every round and how we get good problem definition. What happens when we pass defects on? Um, after every round, the team go and fill in a daily management board and they report out to the facilitators and they talk about what they're gonna do differently for the next round. And then, of course, standard work in Yamazumi, making sure that all of our work cells are balanced. And as you can imagine, through the six rounds, the first round is a total car crash. You know, deliveries, you don't deliver anything. It costs a fortune and quality is poor. And by the sixth round, it's running like an excellent factory. So your quality is, is on. You are delivering exactly what you need to. You're doing it um, for a lower cost. And you can imagine the, uh, the journey that the teams go through when they do that. So now we've taught people a bit about lean language and we're starting to talk the same language. The next thing that we knew we had to focus on was tiered daily management. So this is the backbone of how we communicate and how we measure our performance. So the way that we've designed our system is we have four tiers in total. Tiers one, two and three is all power of the pen. There's no print-offs. Everybody fills it in every day at the beginning of their shift. And all of the metrics are aligned from what is expected of the business and it's flowed down all the way to a tier one level. So an operator can see what their contribution is towards a site level objective or goal. Um, we, the big drive here, and we're not there yet, is how do we get 80% of the problems to be solved at a tier one level? How do we stop stuff from being escalated? Because Ultimately, when stuff's been escalated, it's a bit of a problem in the system. So how do we give the teams the empowerment and the tools to be able to do that? Um, they're all run to the same standard. And then, I don't know if people have heard of this before, but we've got a blend of KBIs and KPIs. KBIs is key behavioral indicators. Well, how are our teams behaving? What ideas are they coming up with? Are they making the place safer? Are they recognizing the teammates? And we believe if you focus on the behaviors, the performance indicators will come as well. So the big headline here, it's not about reporting the news, it's about making the news. In a speech yesterday, we, spoke, we heard about people standing at tiered boards and just looking at the metrics and then going again. So the message that we're sending to our teams is, if you've had a red day, that's okay, show us what action you're taking. So we're really driving the action taking and about making the news for today, not just letting it continue. Here's an example of what a tier daily management board looks like in our factory. This is a tier three. Um, you might notice we've put people first. This might be a bit different to some other tier daily management boards. It's something that we got from our team as part of our Mancunian way. And I think what we're seeing here is people are the most important. Psychological safety is important. So it doesn't mean that safety is not important, but we've put people first. The base, basic idea of the board is the top row, 10 feet, 10 seconds, red or green, are we winning or losing? Depending on whether we're winning or losing, what's our trend? So is it, is it an immediate trend that's just gone red or have we got a problem within month? Then we have a contribution chart that says if we have got a problem, 
What are the contributing factors towards that problem? And then under each pillar, we've got our problem solving boards to allow our teams to go and take some action in a problem solving way. And a very quick example of what a tier four looks like. So tier four is a weekly review, not a daily review. And this is effectively our management review, but we follow the same people, safety, quality, delivery, and cost. We have the KBIs in there as well as the KPIs. And this is us taking action on a more on the weekly trends that we're seeing. So where do we centre all of this out of? A lot of companies have an obey room. We built an obey room to centre our Mancunian Way journey out of, uh, but rather than giving it the traditional name, we wanted to give it back to our teams. So we had a competition. The winner was the Hacienda, uh, and the, one of our engineers won that competition through a, a, a voting system. So anyone who doesn't know any, the Hacienda, so the Hacienda was a nightclub that was based in Manchester and sort of defined the music scene of Manchester back in, I think, the 80s. Um, and it's also, if you take it back to its Latin origin, it means a place where things get done. And this is we get, we get things done. Quick, I'd like to play this game, and it's the biggest room I've done this to. So just quick show of hands. Has any, did anybody go to the Hacienda? Oh, well, uh, oh, that's good. Hey, you're looking very proud as well, yeah. Yeah, you've shown your cards now. So we've got the Obeya room, or the Hacienda, where we centre all of this, this mission out of. Then we realised... We liked the idea of solving problems, but we didn't know how to do it in a structured way. And this is where the LEA came in and really helped us. So we had a structured approach to problem solving. We knew we wanted to go from basic problem solving or reactive, just do it, through to rapid and then into some of the more advanced tools. And we pull, pulled the LEA in to help us with this. And what I love about this process is there's two things, right? One is it's a four-step process, so it's simple to get, your, to get the team's heads around but we are creating a capability to look after ourselves. So we're not only teaching people to use the skill, but we're actually teaching teachers to teach and coach as well. So we're gonna become self-sustained with this when we get completed with it. The process is level one is um, you do some online learning. Level two is a on-site face-to-face training where it takes about half a day. Then what you have to do, each team member has got to go and take a real life problem from the factory and they have to bring that problem through a 12-week cycle all the way through to completion and report it out. So we had some fantastic reports out. You can see the back of Dave's head there. He came and helped us along and threw some coaching um, into the mix. It was a really good day. There was a lot of energy in the room. And now we've got 16 of those team members uh, moving forwards with it. We've got 18 more in training and we've got six people who can coach. That's the most important part, right? We've got people now who we can just go and say, if someone wants to learn problem solving, we've got somebody in-house for free, effectively, that we can use. Then, the other part of our staple diet was end-to-end -end lead time. We are uh, an industry that hasn't looked at batch sizes or inventory for some time, so we've got a lot of fat in the system, so we started to do some value stream design. Dave was a fantastic help here in terms of breaking our products down into families, and what we actually learned was, by following the Glenday Civ process, 90% of our products comes out of the top three value streams. So if we focus on three value streams, we can be influencing 90% of our products. The process we've developed is come up with a current state map, go out and map your process, map all your, where your inventory is. Then blue sky thinking, three-year vision, what's, what is the art of the possible? Unconstrained thinking. And the reason we do that is if you ask people to do that in one year or six months, they get a bit panicky that they're going to be held to it. So this is the pie in the sky thinking. And then we do six month iterative future state maps to get to that three year vision. The example I've got here, 115 days is current state to get a product, raw material through to shipping to the customer. Um, we think we can get that down to 38 with some of the improvements that we're going to make. So that leaves us with our staple diet complete. And what we were hearing from our teams was, we love the idea of it, we like what we're doing, but we don't understand what, what's next. Where's the roadmap, where's the plan? Tell us what's going on. So we've reflected on that, and we've developed something which is, um, we're calling the sprints. How this works is you've got our guiding principles, which is everything that we need to do. This is everything that we want to work on and why we want to come to work every day. We've got our values, which is how we want to behave and how we want our teams to behave. And then we've got our sprints. Now, the sprints is basically a five-phase model. We've aligned it to our cultural enablers. So each one of these cultural enablers that you see on the screen, each one of the individual symbols is linked to the sprint. And what we're going to do through those five sprints is continue to work on each element of it. 
and then we're going to develop a lean maturity assessment to measure ourselves against how we're progressing against that. And the lean maturity assessment isn't just systems and tools, that's half of it. The other half is behaviours. Are we seeing the behaviours we want to see against each one of these guiding principles? And that's what it looks like in a bit more detail. And uh, we've got a Shingo coach who's helped us with this, a guy called Steve Nickel from the Lean Orange, and he really helped us. We were just throwing all sorts of stuff into these sprints, and he basically brought it back to say, they're your, they're your guiding principles. Why are you not aligning it to those? So we've done a lot of work on that. Results, what do the results look like? So John left us on a bit of a cliffhanger in 2021. You can see our Gallup engagement store. We, we saw a big step up when we, we started to make that change. Granted, there's a slight step down, which we got a couple of months ago. We're not too discouraged by that, but we do know there's areas still to work on. But above four in Gallup in a manufacturing site, we believe is very good. You can see hazards and CI ideas year on year. We're making more of improving the rate that we're building those. And recognition, we've got um, 735 of our team members are recognising each other against core values. So, biggest learning so far. If we think about culture as the, the habits of people and the way that they generally behave. So how do we get our teams to start behaving in certain ways? And I'm going to finish on a story, which is about a man who wakes up on a Sunday morning, uh, he looks out the window and it's a cold day, there's snow on the ground and there's ice on the ground, and he should go to church on Sunday morning, but he looks out the window and he decides he's not going to go to church because the road is icy. But then in the afternoon he gets a phone call from his friends who are down the pub, and they're drinking beer and the fire's on, and it sounds quite exciting, so he decides, it's okay, I'm going to walk to the pub because I'm going to walk carefully. And it comes from an old proverb, the church is near, but the road is icy. The pub is far, but I'll walk carefully. Now, I'm not going to dare step into a minefield of trying to compare work with either religion or a pub. But if we think about the decision that this man made, why did he not go to church that morning? Didn't want to, could make an excuse. Why did he go to pub in the afternoon? because he wanted to and he could make an excuse to get there. So the, the message here, if we bring it back to our world, is how do we get our teams to want to come to work, to want to make changes? We want to create an environment where teams are kicking the door down because they've got a new idea and they want to come and implement it, and they are empowered to do so, and they're recognised when they do it. And that's the holy grail as far as we're concerned, and we're going to continue to chase that holy grail, but we're going to do it the Mancunian way. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest lean content.